Hi everyone, this is Aaron, and today we're doing a day two follow-up for CES. While I'm not able to make it there this year, I figured I'd cover some of the top stories of the year. So first, let's get started by talking about the Mac App Store. The Mac App Store came out yesterday, and uh, or day two of CES, and already has surpassed 1 million downloads. I did an overview of it, so if you haven't seen that, check it out, and uh, if you have Snow Leopard, go download it yourself and check it out. One of the bigger stories from yesterday was the Motorola Atrix 4G. This is a new 4-inch display smartphone that has a resolution of 540 by 960 pixels. And the phone is a little bit different in that it has a dual-core NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor. It has 1 gigabyte of RAM, 16 gigabytes of internal storage, which is upgradable to 32 via SD card. Uh, it also has a 5 megapixel camera, but that's not the biggest news of that phone. This phone actually has a dock which allows it to turn into a regular desktop computer. So you plug it into this dock and you've got yourself a computer with keyboard and monitor. You can also use that dock to plug into a television and use it as a media center, sort of like an Apple TV or something similar. You can also use it in a little laptop version they have, which it plugs into the back. And so basically you're carrying around your entire computer with you at all times. It's a pretty interesting concept and looks very promising. It's definitely something worth checking out. There's a full video of it available from uh, Engadget, which had a hands-on on it. Definitely take a look at it if you're interested. Honeycomb has finally broke cover as far as Google's newest or latest operating system. It's made for tablets and basically Google was saying don't make tablets until we come out with this version because it's specifically for that. And once you see it, you'll understand why. It's a big departure from Android or at least it kind of looks that way in that it's a very clean, simple UI that has some really nice flowing uh, workflow or ways to do things and uh, very minimalistic and looks very nice. Uh, definitely worth checking out. There's some videos on the internet and I'll try to include them in the show notes assuming they haven't been taken down. Verizon today had a press conference as well in which they showed off the HTC Thunderbolt and the LG Revolution, both of which are 4.3 inch displays and some of the specs are kind of up in the air at this point as far as the time of this recording anyway. Uh, the HTC Thunderbolt uh, has been leaked it, it, for some time in the past and we've seen it around or at least what we thought were pictures of it. The LG Revolution however has a super LCD screen and on top of that also has a lot of HD recording features with an 8 megapixel camera, a forward facing camera and they both come equipped with Android 2.2. Now the other thing that was announced was a new Samsung uh, LTE or 4G smartphone. The specs are kind of up in the air. It doesn't even have an official name at this point, but Samsung showed it off and so did Verizon. Verizon also showed off two new wireless hotspots from Samsung and Novatel, as well as showed off the 4G Samsung Galaxy Tab. For those of you who watch Hulu a lot, Hulu Plus is headed to Android. Now there's no specific time of when it will be released, unfortunately, and the bad part is you'll still have to pay for it, but it is headed to Android finally. A company called Fulton Technologies actually showed off some pretty impressive, well, technology. It's a new inductive charging system, similar to what you see on, say, a Palm Pre Plus, where, or a Palm Pre, where it has the inductive charging, where you set it on that touchstone and it just charges without plugging anything in. And what they showed was the new Tesla Model S, which is a sports sedan uh, that is fully electric, if you haven't seen that before. And what they did was show off that you can charge it without plugging it into anything. They basically parked it over the top of an inductive charger and it was charging. The other thing they showed was a cereal box doing the same thing. So while it's on the store shelf, it could have a light-up display to attract buyers. When you take it off of the, the shelf, it would shut off and you wouldn't have it lighting up anymore. It's simple inductive charging, but finally it's been standardized and finalized so that we can have uh, some of this really interesting and innovative technology. While Sony did not show this off at CES, the Xperia-labeled PlayStation phone actually broke cover in China with a whole demonstration on video. I'm sure they don't appreciate it, but at least we get to take a look at what might be coming for PlayStation as far as portable gaming. Since portable gaming is moving towards uh, well, smaller phone-like devices, it makes sense that PlayStation or Sony would want to make a device that has similar functionality. So uh, be sure to check that out. As CES continues, we'll try and keep up with coverage. Obviously, I'm not covering everything, but if there's something you want to see covered, or may have questions on, I'll try and answer that. There's just so many different things going on, it's hard to cover everything without making the video an hour long. 
So we could definitely do that, but you would probably be bored by that point. This is Aaron. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.